All right, everyone, a pretty big PlayStation 5 news day and just next generation news in general. Epic Games has released a nine minute technical demo running in real time on PlayStation 5 called Lumen in the Land of Nanite. Let's go over all the details of why this is really the true next generation benchmark that we've been looking for so far. This is essentially the announcement of Unreal Engine 5, which most current generation games use Unreal Engine 4. A lot of games use Unreal Engine 4, not just video games, but also film, um, configurators online. It's widely adapted in the technology space. And uh, so it's not just uh, for games, but we do have the next iteration that will be widely adopted going into the next generation of consoles. There's a lot of amazing tools in here that really showcase what we're looking for out of next generation video games, because that is something a lot of people have been really yearning for lately, especially after the 20 some odd minute video we had from inside Xbox, where it was a lot of games coming to Xbox Series X, but those games are principally developed with current generation platforms in mind. They're using current generation engines, not just with Unreal, but other aspects. But uh, there's one game in there that we can highlight that really kind of showcases what can be done moving forward in Unreal Engine 5. But anyway, this demo was called Lumen in the Land of Nanite, and it's called that for a few reasons. Uh, this demo uh, has been playable, so it's, you know, it's not a real video game or anything like that, but this is what we often see with uh, new console generation launches and things like that. We have a lot of technical demos showcasing some of the tools that will be available to developers, so this is no different. There's an insane number of triangles being used here. So what would typically be used in cutscenes, lighting is completely dynamic. So Lumen is used for global illumination. That's the tool that Epic um, is uh, showcasing here. And we've also got sound field rendering for spatialized audio. They didn't dive too much into that. Nanite is the second part of this. So this is another tool for virtualized uh, geometry. This lets artists import film quality art and assets into Unreal Engine. Epic Games CTO Kim Labrury says, an HDMI cable went into the disc recorder and played out in real time. So there's no editing, no tricks. That's what's coming off the box. This is all from a PlayStation 5 development kit. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney says, Unreal Engine 5 is meant to do things that are absolutely not possible today. He then goes on to state, Lumen and Nanite are not just order of magnitude leaps in visual quality, but they're also greatly simplifying technologies for the artists who build content. Now, after the initial showing of this demo, Jeff Keighley went into a pretty lengthy interview, and here's some key details of that. Unreal Engine 5 will be available and usable everywhere, so of course that's Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, even current generation machines, PC, Mac, iOS, Android, it, it of course, you know, scales, so it's got usability everywhere, and again, not just in video games. Uh, PlayStation 5's SSD is far ahead of current high-end PCs. Now, we didn't really need Epic to tell us this, we know that the amount of transfer speeds that uh, the IO uh, throughput that Sony's gone with is just absolutely ridiculous. Now, when it was asked about PS5 and Series X, uh, basically the difference is there. Uh, Epic did not want to play favorites here, so they pretty much said they wanted to support everything that uh, both consoles are their babies and everything that they work on. Uh, they're all passion projects. Uh, games are normally static, so this is also a pretty big talking point here. The world uh, that we usually interact with is just that. It's actually not that interactive. You can't do things like user-generated content or move things around or no destructible environments. Your game gets a little bit more complex. You have to do a lot more to make those things work when you're developing a game today, but not so moving forward on Unreal Engine 5. So things can be a lot more dynamic. This is basically just more cause and effect. So one example is the rocks crumbling in this demo. It's not a pre-rendered cutscene, but instead, a high resolution rock asset moving in real time based on the player's actions. So there's a lot of influence here and things that you can do to change what's going on in your environment. Over the years, Epic has had a lot of film customers using Unreal Engine. And moving forward, they'd like to bridge that gap between the two and make the technology seamless and available for both movie makers and game creators. And of course, uh, with game creation, a lot of this has to get dialed down a bit and uh, that won't be as nearly as much of an issue as it has been moving forward. The tools made available are also there to help smaller developers get to scale. They have more accessibility with creating a game that uses high quality assets thanks to the Unreal Store. So I'd like to actually take you back to the inside Xbox showcase. Uh, the first game that they showed was uh, Bright Memory Infinite. And that game is made by a single individual. Pretty much every aspect of that game, he's pulling that off. And I think most people would actually agree that out of that 20 minute showcase, 
it actually looked very pretty, very beautiful. And when you find out it was just a single person, you kind of start to question how is that even remotely possible? But using Unreal Engine, using uh, the store, and uh, being able to use whatever asset you want and bring that into your game, that's how you can make that stuff a lot more easy and accessible for, for smaller teams, teams that don't have a huge budget. And uh, speaking of budget, they'll be waiving royalty fees on the first $1 million in game revenue, game revenue starting today. This also uh, really opens it up for a lot of smaller teams that might not have been able to, to afford you know, some of the revenue splits and things like that that comes with using an engine. And then there's the storefront fees when your game's finished and you put it out. Um, so putting a little bit more money back into the developer and the publisher when uh, you know it's prime time for these uh, smaller scale games to ship. That is really what will help uh, smaller developers. Then we uh, learned that Fortnite will be released on next generation consoles at launch, uh, and it will be moved to Unreal Engine by mid-2021. So granted, Fortnite will be available on next gen at launch. Uh, this will be kind of the case for most games where I said it was very appropriate how Microsoft said optimize for a Series X. You know, these games are still built on current generation platforms, so you can see a frame rate bump. Uh, resolution bump depending on the developer and their time and resources available to them they might do a little bit more with that particular game outside of resolution and frame rate but you know inherently these games can't you know they're not going to be absolutely mind-blowing uh, but the fact that Fortnite will move to Unreal Engine 5 by mid 2021 means you could see something that looks a lot more a lot more next gen granted Fortnite isn't really a a game doing a whole lot in terms of the visual aspect but the game could uh, be further built upon by Unreal Engine uh, and that's also the case here is that uh, it was still noted a lot of games are being developed right now on Unreal Engine 4 so uh, it's well, it's, it's still going to take a little bit to see that that change over and we've been talking about this for a little bit now where it's like okay well you got to keep in mind a lot of third parties are still developing on current gen and next gen but this demo was absolutely something that we needed to see now this isn't a real game um it is just very much that a demo that uh demonstrates the technologies that will be available to developers moving forward if they choose to develop on Unreal engine 5 and uh, there is a lot going on here and uh it's the it's a lot of the high quality assets uh, definitely near the end of the demo where you see um, the protagonist in this uh, little short teaser jump down and uh, it's this very fast paced flying sequence and you're seeing all these uh, there's there's no pop in there's nothing like that right it's just all very seamless it's very fast all the way all the way down to the end where uh, she gets to that portal thing whatever she's trying to get to but even switching over to the global illumination so this is something that we're hearing a lot of and it was demonstrated very well here because it was a cave environment right so you do have uh situations where when the cave opens up when there's a hole you know but in the ceiling uh and light can pass through and you can see how it dynamically shifts around the environment as you walk around it or change the camera angle the rock assets, the crumbling rock assets, when you get further into the cave and it becomes very dark and using a light source and uh, those little uh, bugs are scattering away, you know. All in all, I think this was a beautiful presentation, not just in terms of the tools that are going to be available, but uh, visual fidelity in general, that is something that people are really looking for and I think this is something that finally uh, really showcases uh, a look at what next generation games are going to do when, when a game is developed from the ground up on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. The SSDs do play a big role here in making sure that there is no pop and that these games can bring in all these assets and look as beautiful as it does and again that cause and effect right so uh, environments can be a lot more interactive than we previously haven't seen before. Uh, usually when you see a game that does a little bit of cause and effect, destructible environments, things like that, a lot of other aspects of the game have to get brought down. That's something else that has actually been brought, uh, that has been coming under fire is uh, the news that uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be at minimum 30 frames per second, which is already setting people off in terms of, oh my god, I thought we were getting 60 frames per second as the standard here. And, uh, you know, I just want to mention, I've said it time and time again, but whenever a new generation comes out, uh, it's never really a situation where why is there no standard for frame rate and resolution or really frame rate because that's so important when you're you know playing uh, certain games really most games uh, pretty much every video game benefits from a higher frame rate but it's not a very marketable thing and consoles are a closed box so it's just resource management at that point uh, we have 1080p 60 frame per second games on playstation 3 from day one but, you know, there's other aspects of the game that have to take a hit there when you want to get to there. And so when we look at something like what Assassin's Creed is doing, 
if they, you know, they're gonna, a lot of developers are gonna make that choice of pushing visual fidelity to the absolute max, uh, taking advantage of all these tools that are accessible to them, making their game interactable. Uh, it really depends on the goal or the, the scope of the particular game and what they're trying to accomplish for the uh, for the player. Of course, there's something to be said about the norm that we saw on PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, where a lot of developers allowed toggles in their games, right? So you could favor resolution, you could favor frame rate. Uh, great option, really, that allows people to pick and choose what they really want to do here. And so frame rate is really important. You, you do something like that where you lock the game at 1080, you get uh, you know, a somewhat unlocked frame rate where you're getting <laughs> hopefully 60, but even on current generation platforms, even on PS4 Pro, at what God of War was still floating around uh, the 50s um, when you unlock the frame rate. And uh, of course it would dip um, or go up depending on, again, the environment or how much load was being put on the, uh, the scene that you were playing. But uh, with more horsepower, you could hopefully lock the game to 60 frames per second and you'll be a lot more happy there. A lot of exciting stuff coming to next generation platforms. We just have to wait another year or two well into PS5 to see a lot of this stuff uh, truly showcased and playable where developers move away from the outgoing platforms, right? So just PS5 and Series X games, uh, working on Unreal Engine 5 and all these other next generation engines that we don't know about just yet and that aren't being talked about openly. But uh, it is also important to remember that we are still going to see more footage more trailers uh, and hopefully more announcements within the coming months that will showcase uh, more true next generation titles that are slated for release in 2021 and beyond we know sony's first party in all likelihood is working exclusively on playstation 5 after we have our last major ps4 exclusives being last of us part 2 ghost of tsushima this is typical they move over to the next gen uh, which they're called playstation studios now and not sony worldwide studios we have a lot more playstation news and that to cover this coming friday so be on the lookout for that but uh, otherwise that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed if you haven't yet please subscribe for the best playstation news reviews and updates that are here on youtube you can and should follow me on twitter at mystic ryan and that is it i will see you all on friday you take it easy.